Hello everybody, I am Tom and you are watching me play Disco Elysium. So, I'm walking my way back to, uh, the main town and I came across this little thought bubble in my head. This is it. The scene of the party. The fire pit. Cigarettes and empty bottles all evidence it. Hold up, don't you mean the scene of a crime? Not as such. I'm talking about what came after the party scene. Hmm, it does look like a lot of folks partied here. Looks like they were here a while. Judging from all the bottles, the sunken motor carriage provided them a focal point. Like a goose ice sculpture or a chocolate fountain. Looks like we've had a couple of party goers here. Looks like it. Hmm. Probably against the law on this ice like this is probably a public danger. No, that's such, no. Let's keep moving, detective. Somehow, he doesn't want to dwell on it. Makes sense. It is my broken car here <laughs> that I crashed into the ocean. Um, alright. So, let's keep going. Um, I didn't fast travel back, by the way, because I couldn't. Which is interesting. Um, I'm gonna check here. Just because I haven't really checked here since I came here the first time. Seems to be locked, interestingly. Alright, let's keep going. <clears throat> yeah, I couldn't fast travel back to the, uh... The Martinez place for some reason. I don't know why, specifically. Uh... Shop is closed. Stop. Now. It is time. But what? Crisis. Death. You can feel it in your blue soul. What am I supposed to do? Arm yourself with anything you can, unless you have nothing. Because you didn't find your lost gun, then just walk to your death. I can talk you out of it, whatever it is. You're too likable to die. Don't worry. Hmm. I'm not sure if I feel ready for what lies ahead. Then you'd better get ready. Whatever happens, I've got your back. Interesting. That's why I couldn't fast travel, I suppose. Might work as a weapon. Alright, let's go. I'm all out of shit to give, loincloth. Welcome to the fucking reckoning. There's a feverish gleam in his eyes. Put your damn gun down. People are gonna get hurt. We need to talk this through. All right? Shut up. You're not gonna talk yourself out of this, loincloth shit fuck. This is the mercenary at the gates. His chest rises and falls under the ceramic breastplate. His fingers reach for the butt of his sidearm. What's going on here? Shh. This is a misunderstanding. Nothing irreversible has happened yet. You can just return to your unit and forget all about this. The Kipt is merciful, willing to spare us if we just forget about our murdered and humiliated commander. I hmm. think we should just kill everyone, Corti. You are all drunk. Come to your senses. You won't gun down seven people in the middle of the street. This isn't a frontier town or a jungle outpost. Easy, Lizzie. Let me handle it. I know guys like this. I'm sure we can come to a peaceful agreement. Ain't that right, fellas? Peaceful. Hmm. Nest in your abdominal cavity like a little wild mouse. The masked man's words are barely intelligible, but you can hear them. Fuck, there's a third one. How did we miss something like this? Mm -hmm. The lieutenant is genuinely worried for his life. You should consult him before getting in there. The big one's the mercenary at the gates, the scab leader. If this turns into a firefight, we should take him out first. A sound strategy. He's the leader. What do we do? My plan is not to get killed, but we have to intervene. Good. This is the police. Get lost, comedian. 
you cops had your chance. Now it's fucking time for some justice. He's drunk. I think he's calmed down a bit. Pig, fuck! Hmm. I'm gonna say nothing and cross my arms. You. You're probably gonna get killed too. I think I'm gonna kill you. I didn't think I had it in me to kill a cop. To your left, you hear the lieutenant cock his gun. No one is going to kill anyone. Let's just put the guns down and talk like civilized human beings. She doesn't seem to understand the severity of the situation. With a wordless gurgle, the killer loads his long rifle. The leader gives a small nod to the helmeted man. You feel your fists contract as you stand there between these men, all carrying real weapons no no it's okay soften him up and trust the others to attack if it comes to that make him talk present an argument peace always peace it has worked thus far start with the first idea you have move down from that please Tried thinking of an argument first. All right, here we go. This is an illegal tribunal. Creno would never sanction this. Who's the commanding officer? Take your pick. You were called Downwell once. What happened? What always happens when you get good at your job? That name meant night raids. Fucking. Extrajudicial funky time burn villages. Shit that sounds bad on the radio. The same thing happened when we were called whatever the fuck it was. Probably won't be called Cronell for much longer either. Hmm. Not after this shit. Okay, it's not much. But he's thinking about something else. And his hand is off the gun. This did something. Easy now. Tell them these men didn't do it. There's a peaceful way out. They didn't do it. Yeah? Who did that? It was someone else, someone who's not here now. How fucking convenient. Hmm. He was shot at a great distance. The sniper did it. You think I'm fucking stupid, cop? What if I just shot one of your pals here, right now? Huh? How about the kit? Tell me. It's a magic fucking sniper. One more time. Listen, please. This cop and this drumhead cop marshal won't decide who... Hmm. Why doesn't he believe me? The Hardy Boys confessed to hanging him. All together. Titus said we took him out back and hanged him. He said it loud in a public place. He was shot. He wasn't hanged. Listen to me. You're lying. DePaul heard it. You heard wrong. She and these men have been helping us find the shooter. C hanging was only a cover up. Listen. The shot rings in your ears. A low, tinny ring. No one died. Then the Hardy Boys yell something. The young woman stands and looks behind her. The shot has flown over her head, crashing a small pane of the glass window behind her. I missed. Hmm. I know what I heard, Corti. They said they killed him. They said it was a good way to end a Sunday night. That doesn't sound good. You need to change the topic now, or there will be another shot. What topic? Shots have been fired. Act before it's too late. This was a close call. Who's that, Pointman? I didn't know you had a third guy. 
Rude. Rude is the killer. Rude, the killer, how and cloven. He doesn't talk much. All of you cunts inside out. The killer. The gunner. The raddest. The killer. Hmm. What do you think he does? There, on the rim of Owen Clerven's helmet, you count little stick figures. 19, 20, 21. It kills. Um... I'm a killer too. You're a tit sucking pig. I'm gonna show you, killer. What are we waiting for? Let's blow that pig fucking mouth off his face. Lance Corporal, just fucking shut up and wait for your order. Hmm. You're all drunk, look at yourselves. Yes. So what? Your judgment's impaired, you'll regret this. Nah. I'm clear as day. Fucking government ordained super soldier. Enough already! What is this? We didn't come here to fucking chat! Interrupt me again and I will execute you on the spot, Lance Corporal. I'm gonna try it. It's a hard fucking... Just in case. Did I actually level that up? I did. It's 97 now. Dangerous. Ask about him first. You don't want personal facts about his dead friend coming out of your mouth. He has to start it. Who are you? Corty? Sergeant Major Raoul Corton. Putting in to burn this fucking mud hut to the ground. Hmm. As he moves, the interlocking pieces of his armor click softly. Click, click, click. A realization comes to you like a picture puzzle coming together. His name is Raoul Courtenard. The dead man's name is Elise Courtenard. He's brothers with the deceased. That makes more sense. No. Probably foster brothers. Elise was put into a foster home, remember? For killing, maiming, and humiliating our commanding officer, you are all sentenced to death by lead. Hmm. No, I know that name. Raul and Ellis Courtney. I'm sorry about your brother, Raul. He wasn't my fucking brother. We just grew up on the same farm and got beat into place by the same sick fuck. You're foster brothers, I know that. You don't know shit. Lance Corporal, why don't you? You lost him. Quick. His parents left him in a fucking leaf compactor. Who? Laylee. Yeah, when he was small, it was just an infant. We researched him. We contacted the ICP and looked at his birth records. That was in there. And other things. They fucking put Laylee in a leaf compactor. And now these cunts finished the job. It's a mind fuck, Corty. He wasn't put in a leaf compactor. They're making it up to fuck with us. Major, permission to. Open fire. We can't have that. Interfere now. By Nadal, 41. That really happened, didn't it? Our colonel did what he had to do. It was either one cunt or a hundred of them. Rude here. In your ship, I fried it, little fucker. He likes to fire mortars at random coordinates. Wipe out mud huts like that. When he gets 
bored. Lately knew how to command. He was a good commander. I can see you miss him. Oh yeah. He would have commanded this fuck hell way better than I did. That didn't happen. Because hey, see Bill and Kipty the Kipped here. Fucking murdered him. Had him stink the village up for two weeks after. And you fucks did nothing. Listen, man. We told you we... Told us what? What did you say? Who said that? Tattoo fuck. You'll die first. You have blue eyes, didn't you, brother? Baby blue, yeah. Like someone fucked up and put a baby's eyes on a grown man. He smiles, pulling his face in a strange way. It was creepy, but bitches, bitches like that shit, I guess. Or, I don't know what bitches like. I just know how to mow down cloths. Everyone says good things about him. He was a talker. Fuck do you mean, talker? We've heard testimony. People say he was charismatic, a nice guy to be around. Yeah, he liked to chat up the natives. Share leaflets. Squeeze a bit of kipped ass here and there. Great fucking idea that turned out to be. If Lely was here, he would spare the lot of you. Maybe shoot one for show. But me, I'm not a big fan of public affairs, Clay Monkey. I'll gun every one of you down for what you did. Ready to open fire, Major. At your command. I will find the killer. He didn't deserve to go out like that. Find his killer. Cop. His killer stands right there. Shitting his pants. And you're standing in the way protecting them. I know what this tactic is, Silo Sam. You're gonna die for them. Right here. Today. Big talk. But that leaf compactor won't leave his mind anytime soon. It's a small thing, but it got him off center. Where's Klasa? She can explain this. Who the fuck is that? Klasia, the woman upstairs. Where is she? She left! What do you mean she left? She left! Her room's cleaned out! Right before these assholes showed up! We should have arrested her. You can feel how upset he is with himself. Just for a second. Then the fear takes over, and he's back in the moment. Hey, Bushman! Your little cunt isn't gonna help you out of this one! The Wild Pine Trap does not approve of this. You think I care what that company cunt thinks? <laughs> he isn't just boasting. He really doesn't care. Back out of this now, or it'll get bad. Hmm. Fucking waste this fuck! Why did I not find my gun? Watch that loincloth. I can't hear you. Sounds like you got your mouth full of dick. Root! Shit, this is it. Tell him anything. Tell him you have more information. Kill me and never find out who killed your colonel. I'm withholding information. Root! Kill him. The porcelain man raises his rifle and takes aim at you. His hands are steady, and the long barrel of the rifle sways slowly. An Easter ARFA-7, built for taking out light armored vehicles. It will devastate you. Try and dodge it. I mean, why the hell not? The shot rings and you stumble. Something violently tugs at your shoulder, pushing you backwards with incredible force. A volcano of burning pain erupts from your left shoulder. God, please. He's aiming for the eye slot in Rude's helmet. 
an extremely difficult shot. He has to. The rifleman will fire at you again. Then, two shots ring once, and you hear a scream. But you're too hurt to see who got hit. Did he hit the rifleman? Blood gushes from the helmet's eye sockets as Rude staggers back, disoriented. The sounds coming from his helmet are not human. An unbelievable shot from the lieutenant. He screamed. Glenn, dying in a puddle of blood behind you. His mangled torso has two gunshot wounds. Blood gushes out of them like red geezers. Oh God, watch out. You see two cold eyes looking at you through all the smoke and the panic, and a pistol raised aimed at your chest, point blank, and the man squeezes the trigger. Look him in the eye. I can't dodge that. A look of happiness. His eyes seem unnaturally bright, shining like stars. Something in the fear must distort him somehow. He is evil. And the end. Here it comes. Death. Try and dodge. I think I'm dead, though. You can't. There is no time. Something inside your pelvis explodes. Your entire lower body is on fire, and your legs can't support you. You fall down like a rag doll. The pain is too immense to scream. It pushes the air out of your lungs. Everything goes dark. A distant blur as you recede into it. Listen through the darkness and the pain. The Hardy Boys are yelling. Someone is running, jumping over you. In the background you hear gunfire shatter glass, and then a man in pain. A familiar sound. It's Titus with a splat like meat. You hear bullets rip into him. His voice still giving orders grows fainter. A gurgle. He's not gonna make it. Try to open your eyes. What do I see? Nothing. A persisting darkness. Dancing lights of pain. Distant shadows cast by them. Like a hellish play. You're bleeding out. Hmm. There's a white shadow that smells like apricots. It's always there. Stay with me. I can't forget it, even when I drink so much. Yes, keep talking. You hear me? Stay awake. But you can't. It's so hard. Your eyelids grow heavy and the sounds ever more distant, and a cold comes over you. The lieutenant, too, is somewhere far away, almost gone, when suddenly you sense something behind him. A shadow towering. Someone stands there, raising his pistol at him. The lieutenant does not see it. He's pushing down on your wound with both hands. Just scream. No, you scream. Behind you, from your bloody lips. Your eyes are full of fear. There is no room for hesitation. The lieutenant turns around and fires, his body falling on yours in the course of the motion. You hear a roar of pain, a death scream. The sound disappears like someone pressed stop on the tape. The hulking figure, too, is gone. And so is Kim. And the whole world. Fall into dark, total darkness. This is death. One more door, baby. One more door. Let me back in the fight. The fight? There is no fight. The fight is over. It was lost a thousand years ago. You have laid here forever. 
falling deeper. Take the door. He's not taking it. His body is not taking it. Oh, God, no. He's not disintegrating. He's swelling up instead. Over the hours. Hurting. Moaning in his sleep. And rotting. And being disinfected. And smelling of drugs and feeling saliva in his mouth. Drifting in painkillers. Thrashing in his own sleep. He can't go. Not before the case is solved. Exactly. There was a radio in the distance. A radio of the world. Plain sounds. Good morning, Elysium. Soon you will return to the world. Hours turn to days. Soon we will get up again and go through it. Again, again. Finally, we know what the infernal engine was outside. The clarion call. The engine of a caprice Kinema. No, it was him. He is the infernal engine. Can't you see? He never stops. He only gets wild. Great voice work, by the way. Limbic system going off. You see the lieutenant's familiar shape in the orange jacket. It turns double, then triple, from the pain. Kim? Sunrise, Arabellon. How bad am I hurt? Pretty bad, officer. You've suffered two wounds. The first is below your shoulder. The bullet passed through your shoulder blade, luckily missing your lung and heart. Very lucky. The second shot hit you in the thigh, the left quadriceps. No major arteries were nicked, but the bullet had to be removed. Bacterial infection was treated with mercurochrome. Can I walk? We will see. Are you hurt? Not very. I have a concussion from the Major beating me with the butt of his gun. I tried to not move too much. Things would be worse if you didn't warn me. Thank you. I did not see him coming. Stupid of me. Has anyone from my station been to see me? No. A man and a woman sit in the front seat of an armored motor carriage. The woman is driving. The man lights a cigarette. Jean Vitmer is his name. The asphalt vanishes under the wheels of the machine. Ahead. Harbour cranes rise to the sky. Back to that shithole, he says. Good, I don't need him. I called your station after the fight. The injury was logged in. They told me they've sent officers to join you on the site. Odd. You haven't seen any, have you? I'm sure they're worried about you. That means he hasn't seen them around while you were out. They're not really worried about you. If they were... Wouldn't they be here? Better not agitate yourself further, it already hurts. Sorry. Not my station, who treated me? I did. Thank you. No need. Get up. See if I can get up. Bullet through the quadricep. It's gonna be hard to walk. Easy now. How are you? My disco days are done. Your disco days should have been done quite a while back, Lieutenant <laughs> Freighter. <laughs> the room is clean. Mr. Gart cleaned it. It took him an entire day. How long have I been out? Two days, in and out. You've been up enough to take Dwamin and curse and drink water. What'd you say? Sunrise? Sunrise by rebellion. Sunrise, prepare for war. It's an old revolutionary saying. It's a war today. The gates of the harbour are boarded up. The streets are a little more empty. Apocalyptic violence is yet to erupt, I am relieved to say. I think we may have held it off for now. Barely. 
Good. Yes, we have also completely failed, but that's okay. The world's most laughable centrist is the achievement I just got. What happened? What happened? We tried to take the diplomatic route and hoped they wouldn't attack first. They did. The Major gave the command. And then? As retaliation, the rifleman shot you. He hit. With his carabine. I was looking for a clear line of sight. When I found it, I shot and wounded him. While Glenn took a bullet in the spine. It was meant for me. He did not survive. This is not the first person to die in his place. He goes on. Titus, Fat Angus, and Theo charged. Angus and Theo died before they made it to intensive care. Titus died in the hospital. Yesterday. Alain and the young musician, I forget his name. They are all that's left. Titus died? Yes. You were bleeding out. I think you said something about your wife. And you warned me. I was able to disarm the Major before he got a jump on me. Thank you. Although... I was not able to kill him, as I should have. Cranel took him. A stray bullet killed the Paul, though. And that's what happened. Hmm. And the Major? He's in a private hospital across the river. Cranel claimed him from the local butcher shop where Titus died. Turns out he's insured. We won't get to him anymore. The good news is he's not coming here either. I did some damage. How many casualties on the Union side? Total. Five. Glenn, Theo, Shanky, Angus. The fat one. He took a lot of bullets. And Titus. Yes. Thought you only smoked one a day. This is the one. And that's... All. Total shit, Sherikim. Yes, officer. Six people are dead. It's not a success. But what's done is done. The violence is cold enough. The Hornets did not get into the beehive. The worst scenario has not materialized. Yet. And we are still alive. Both of us. Somehow. He did not expect you both to survive once you stepped between those two armies. What happens now, Kim? I honestly don't know. Good, because I totally do. Do you? Because we can't talk to Everhart. The harbour is in lockdown. Everyone in there is outside our grasp now. And Joyce has left too. She's gone? Yes, she left yesterday morning. To meet the board of Wild Pines. Oh, that is what I've heard. There's a pin somewhere in the machine that keeps Connell from sending in a death squad. Hmm. Maybe it's her. Yeah. Maybe she kept her hand. Either way, Ruby's gone. And Classio too. We really should have arrested her, you know? You killed him. I don't know. I think the theory you presented, it's someone else outside our circle of suspects, was right. It better be. Everyone within the circle is either dead or gone. Honestly, I think our investigation has not produced a single credible suspect. Hmm. Right, let's go everything. I'm gonna put a Madre's P on, isn't it? Don't be narcissistic. Half the cops in Revachol West are his peonies. Even if you are, it is not a decisive factor in this case. That does make some sense. I don't even know what this is referring to. The flowers? What? The flowers I didn't catch. Every piece of garbage in the city is not connected to the case. You don't have to catch everything. He's wrong. I remember that now. Mm-hmm. Hole in the wall. Someone was checking her out. I don't know. That's been there for years. And the footprints? Yes. God cursed the footprints. Not solving the case for us. Au diable. <laughs> Still 28% possibility the shot came from a distance. We should go upstairs. Rethink the ballistics in situ. I agree with this. What else? Antique bullet from a Belmar grave, 446 millimeter. How hard can it be to find one? How hard can it be? It's extremely easy. There are thousands lying around. We found one. All completely unusable. 
it's precisely how easy it is to find one that makes the bullet useless. There are all these old bunkers and weapon caches, revolutionary era. We could find thousands more if we wanted. All of Revachol is full of them. But they seemed so mysterious. I can't believe that they're fucking useless. No need to be melodramatic. True. Can I think about solving crimes? He arches his brow. The ceiling fan patiently spins overhead. Solving crimes is hard. It really is very hard. He sounds surprisingly weary. Not ready to give up, are you? No. Are you ready to limp? I'm ready. Good. Where do you want to limp to? The lieutenant did mention doing more ballistics. We should check Class's room upstairs. Why not? Another look at the window, perhaps? The one he was shot through. I don't know. I can't think of anything better. You replace glass shining in the morning light. Traffic outside, back in the world again. The door is <laughs> open. You can walk into Kim's room. Gleaming white enamel. Medical supplies in the cupboard. Mercuridome, a scalpel, and antibiotics. Literally saved my life. The alarm is set for 6.50 a.m. These papers bear the stamp of the RCM. They appear to be fragments of the lieutenant's paperwork, half finished. You make out notes on this and other recent cases. I had got opened the door to your room. You were running a low bacterial fever the first night. Hmm. Thank you for keeping this thing alive a little longer. It would have been easy were it not for my concussion. We both got lucky, considering the odds we faced. Let's go. Alright. The fan stands still. I want to go see Klasa. I also want to go thank Gart, but I'm going to see Klasa first. Okay. Don't run. Makes sense. Looks like she left something on the table. Next to the stack of bills, you see a note. A few lines jotted down in large, uneven handwriting just as the writer was about to rush out the door. I'm sorry, I fucked everyone over. P.S. I didn't kill him. P.P.S. Gift upstairs. A gift? She left in a hurry. It's hardly surprising. Where this gift be? I am not drawing my gun, yet. But I don't like gifts. <laughs> yeah. The medicine cabinet is empty. Not even a toothbrush. Pity. She really cleaned this out. Mm -hmm. She certainly had her priorities straight when she was packing. Mm, grabbed her drugs, interestingly. A red thread made of nylon, it leads out of the room and onto the roof. Huh. You see the same two neon lit shapes, a man and a woman. Only now a red thread bisects the room, pointing from the antenna outside to the cupboard on the wall. This is ballistics. She's left a trajectory for us. A ray of backward motion explodes from his mouth to the roof outside, A prime, to then widen into a radius of locations in Martinez, B prime, B double prime, and B triple prime. Where's the thread lead? It suggests the bullet came from the extreme upper quadrant of possible angles, 
from a point beyond the roof. B triple prime, the island in the bay. Hmm. Trant tells the shot came from the island. Unless she thinks the perpetrator was turning on the ring antenna. That is where the threat seems to point. There are ruins on the islet, a sunken sea fort. I saw it through the coin operator pure. I remember. How did she know how to do this? She was there that night. She would have known precisely where the bullet hole was in the glass. She had a long time to think about it after, standing on that roof, staring at the glass. It also looks like there may be more to her skill set than we know. The question is, should we trust her? It's her way of saying she's sorry. I find that hard to believe. But at this point, what difference does it make? It's also the only location we've yet to rule out. So it is. For a second he seems... tired. You seem unenthusiastic. I just haven't gotten a lot of sleep these past few days. Understandable. He doesn't really believe this will yield anything. Maybe we need to go to the island. The wind blows in from the open window. The lieutenant sighs, looking into the cold distance across the water. He is trying to justify it to himself. The lead is flimsy. You might as well go around Martinez, looking under every rock and talking to every person. But what else is there? There, across the grey water, amidst crumbling concrete, a birch tree and the half-sunken ruins of a flak tower. I remember an anti-aircraft gun on the ruins of one on the island from the coin operating view. Could be the makings of a sniper's nest. What else is there? Not a lot, no. Hmm. I'm going to the island. You in? Of course, of course. I mean. How do we get there? Joyce Messier had her sloop, but she's gone. Leanne, the net picker, she's towering her boat. Ah, yes, of course. The village. Let's go. Well, that's something. Let's go outside first. I want to check a few things. Also, this has been an insanely long episode. We're going to have to end it soon. Throw it tied to the antenna. In fact, I'm going to end it right here. Uh, that's probably a really long episode. I didn't even time it. But I feel like it was like an hour, maybe. Ugh. <sighs> I'm kind of sad that Titus is dead. But I don't know if there was anything I could have done in that conversation. Maybe there was. Could have dodged some bullets if I got some very low percentage chances, I suppose. But for the most part, not a lot I could have done. Except for not go after Ruby so quickly. I think if I got my gun and done some other side stuff before I went and found Ruby, I may have got some more things I could have done. Like I could have had a gun, which would have been helpful, probably. Anyway, that's it for this episode. If you like the video, please leave a like. If you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. As always, thanks for watching, and I shall see you next time. Whew. Two bullet wounds. I mean, I'm not dead. That's always that's always a plus. I guess, I guess that's a thing. Anyway, <laughs> see you next time, guys.